I am Robert. And I'm Madeline. And today we're gonna to be reviewing 2019's Eli. It's about, so this movie actually has no tagline of its own. So if I had to give it, if I had to write the tagline, mm -hmm. it would be uh, Bubble Boy Meets Ghost Story. Accurate. Accurate. So it's about a little boy who, uh, I think he was actually, the actor was 10 when they filmed it. He's got an autoimmune disease. So like if he's exposed to the nature or the regular air, unpurified mm -hmm. air, he, he breaks out and he's gonna die. And you know, basically everything in the world will kill him. Mm -hmm. And he's gonna go to, this, to the doctor's place for special treatment, but it gets a little spooky at the doctors. Let's talk about the cast. This movie has an amazing cast from Charlie Shotwell, who is in Troop, it's Troop Zero, Troop I saw Zero. that. Troop Zero. Not There's a horror movie. <laughs> Kelly Riley, who is Caroline Bingley in the Kira Knightley version of Pride and Prejudice. She's hot. So hot. Um, <laughs> amazing. I thought she had an English accent. She does not. Max Martini, who was the bodyguard from Revenge. He was also in Mad Max, and he was in... Fifty Shades of Grey. Fifty Shades of Grey. He's hot Super too. Super sexy, yeah. He's like a big strapping guy. Very daddy-ish. Oh yeah. yeah. Really feeling it. Oh, daddy. Big daddy vibes. The doctor is played by Lily Taylor. Mm -hmm. Now she has real horror cred, you know. She's, yeah. she's been in uh, The Conjuring. Uh, uh, she was in the remake of uh, the, ha uh, the Haunting. Mm -hmm. or the haunted. She's she's done a bunch of of horror things, and so she knows her stuff. And um, the last person I want to talk about is a character named Haley, played by everyone's uh, beloved redhead from Stranger Things, Sadie Sink. She plays Max on on uh, Stranger Things, and. Um, that's pretty much it. I mean, there's a couple other characters, a couple nurses uh, in, the, in the doctor's place, but there's not a lot of characters. It's pretty tight. Relatively small cast. Yeah. Yes. And um, again, it starts out like a straight sort of medical thriller, mm -hmm. mystery thriller, like, oh my gosh, can we cure this boy? And um, although... You read about the movie online, and people equate it to a lot of different movies. Like, uh, you know, I think it was heavily influenced by Rosemary's Baby. Really, the whole premise of the film mm -hmm. is based on uh, 1976's The Boy in the Plastic Bubble, starring John Travolta, the TV movie also known as Barbarino in a bubble. <laughs> and then uh, kind of a remake as a comedy of that in 2001, starring Jake, Gil Jake Gyllenhaal. That's hard to say. Say it with me. Jake, Jake Gyllenhaal. Gyllenhaal. I know uh, that from screaming it during sex. Continue. That's not <laughs> what you said to me. Um, 2001's Bubble Boy, where Jake Gyllenhaal is a, a similarly afflicted young man. Individual, yeah. Yes. I like the first part of the movie mm -hmm. better than the last part of the movie. Mm -hmm. when, they, when they get him to... Well, first of all, there's some dream sequences in this movie, both before he gets to the hospital and after he gets to the hospital. And uh, they ain't fooling anybody with their dream sequences. Yeah. I, I don't think. Yeah. Like, you know, they cut to the new scene, and I'm like, dream sequence! And it turns out to be a dream sequence. But that's okay. It's probably just because you're smarter than everybody else. Well, I'm an expert at this, mm -hmm. really. Yeah. Um, but the the creepy factor once he gets to the hospital and he's wandering it's not really a hospital it's a renovated farmhouse where the for the special treatment it's like a mansion sort of way out in the country very secluded. they call it a medical facility it's a medical facility i went to one of those once in mexico mm -hmm. and they and let you out 
I, with only one kidney. <laughs> and a hell of a scar. <laughs> He's the only patient at this medical facility. Medical facility. And no he's red gotta, flags there. He's got to go. The doctor says three procedures. All right, Eli. Are you prepared for procedure one? No. Ah! Eli, you have three procedures to go through. Well, let me tell you. I didn't find them pleasant. All right, Eli. Get ready for procedure two. I don't really like medical procedures. No. All right, Eli, get ready for procedure three. Is it in yet? They're unpleasant. These ones were intense medical procedures. Um, ghosts, ghosts, there's ghosts. I think either he's going crazy or he's seeing ghosts. You can't really tell in most horror movies, at least at the beginning. You know, he's walking along. They let for they let this 10-year-old kid wander around a medical facility all by himself a lot. Like where's the parental supervision? The parents not are there, but they're not they're in the I guess they're banging in the room or whatever. They leave the kid <laughs> alone all the time. Mm -hmm. And and he's got his flashlight. You know, I don't why Really do, bold for a kid and not very well, why scared. Why would you just turn the lights on? I mean, there's electricity in the medical facility. I don't know. But you know, the ghosts, the ghost sequences are creepy and scary. A, a lot of people say there's too many jump scares um, and it's very horror tropey and predictable. What do you think? Yeah, I think the jump scares are right. I liked them. They I like, work for I me. I like the poo-poo pants a little bit, you know? Yeah, they work. I mm -hmm. mean, I, I will say this, without spoiling it, because we don't like spoilers here. The last 15 minutes of this movie is not like the first hour and a half of this movie. That's correct. It gets overly complicated with a whole new subplot. Yeah, it does feel a lot like they had somebody write the first hour and a half of the movie and then brought somebody in else to write the last it, 15 minutes. It <laughs> is a lot like that. Like, oh shit, the writer died. Disjointed. You need to hire somebody new. How are you going to wrap this up? Um, so a lot of people don't like the movie because it's like, it's like out of left field at the end. I will say this. This movie is beautifully shot. It looks fantastic the scenes in the house the ghostly sort of special effects the cinematography the director of photography is i think genius mm -hmm. and uh even though it's all it's a one building shot like every set or everything took place in this one building pretty much the i give a lot of credit to the art department and the props department it's, there's some really even though the last 15 minutes leaves me wanting, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. They do some great effects. Um, it's really magical to watch, so I like that. Script? Eh. It was okay. It was all right. Except for the last 15 minutes. Except for the last 15 minutes. Lines from the movie. Hey, spaceman, what planet are you from? Uranus? <laughs> That's actually... Stolen directly from E.T. the Extraterrestrial. And the back of every fourth grade school bus. I mean, I used it earlier today myself, so... Uranus? And the line. <laughs> Eli is having a heated conversation with his parents, and he says, Pray to who? And that's improper English. It would be prayed to whom. <laughs> At another point, Eli is having yet another heated discussion with his parents, and he says, I don't want to make a fucking wish. Which I get. I, I get him on that. I feel him on that. I get it, too. Mm -hmm. um, the make a wish thing reminds me a lot of when you're worked up and somebody tells you to calm down. I'm not going to fucking calm down. Just calm down. I'm not going to fucking calm down. Just calm down.
How many would you li like to give Eli? I'm gonna give Eli three pumpkins. Well, you gotta hold some of them. I agree. Three pumpkins. Again, I think it's the look of the film, the visual cinematography is really the best part of the film in the first half of the I movie. I thought they did a nice job building up and then I just would have liked to see a better resolve. Better yeah, I resolution. mean, it's kind of like watching a Western where the cowboys are having gunfights and stuff and then a, a dinosaur comes out in the last 15 minutes and eats everybody. That's what it's like. It is a little bit what it's like. Not literally, but it's kind of like that. No, literally. There's no dinosaurs in this film. There's a dinosaur in the film. There's no dinosaurs. There's dinosaurs. There's dinosaurs. There's no dinosaurs. Who are you going to trust? Or cowboys. There are no cowboys. I wish there were cowboys. There are definitely dinosaurs, though. Hello! I am Robert. And I'm Madeline. We've been working very hard to bring you October Movie Fest countdown this year. Really hard. But you have to watch all of them because at some point one of us shows our breasts. And if you like October Movie Fest Countdown or All Things Robert, you should subscribe to allmediatv.com because it's fabulous.